Hello, in this episode of my prediction series, I'll be talking about the vice presidential candidate uh, prediction for the Republican side of the field. Uh, so the primaries are all over at this point. Uh, the clear winner of the primary process on the Republican side of the field was Donald Trump. And now there's the convention coming up uh, in, a, in less than two weeks from now. And uh, the Republican convention is the first one. And then there's the Democratic convention. Uh, and at the convention, it's expected that uh, there will be both Donald Trump and Donald Trump's vice presidential uh, choice uh, as the ones that will be chosen as the nominees for the general election. Uh, but before that, I, I think that Trump will announce his, his uh, pick for who he wants to be his vice presidential candidate. Uh, so at this point, I think there's three main uh, contenders vying for the spot of being the vice presidential candidate on the Republican side. The first is Newt Gingrich, the former Speaker of the House who resigned from his post in 1999 uh, because it wasn't a terribly successful year for uh, the Republicans in the midterm elections uh, in 1999. It was a pretty bad outcome. Uh, and so Gingrich resigned from Congress in 1999, and, and since then he hasn't served in, uh, in Congress or... Um, in any major political position in which he was elected by a whole lot of people. Uh, so in that respect, Gingrich's political experience has been uh, sort of in the pub, uh, private sector uh, since 1999. And he's done some pretty amazing things. Uh, he did uh, run in the primaries in 2012 to be president, uh, well, to be the nominee uh, on the Republican side, he had a pretty good showing. Uh, obviously, uh, he didn't win uh, the nomination. I, I went to uh, to Mitt Romney, but uh, so yeah, uh, Newt Gingrich is uh, one of the three contenders, uh, I think, for the uh, the VP pick. Um, the other two are Mike Pence, the governor of Indiana, and Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey. And I'll talk about uh, the the what I perceive to be strengths of each of the picks and, and the weaknesses, and who ultimately I think will be uh, Trump's choice for the uh, vice presidential uh, nominee um, slash uh, candidate uh, uh, to be the second part of his ticket. So it'll be the Trump at the top of the ticket, and then uh, whoever he chooses. Uh, is in the next spot on the ticket. So, being vice president's a super important job. Being the nominee is super important in an election because uh, the vice presidential candidate can, in many respects, sw you know, swing an election, make a big, big difference. Uh, the most prominent example would be the pick of Sarah Palin in 2008, which had a tremendous impact on... Uh, on the outcome since McCain didn't win. The McCain-Palin ticket wasn't effective. Barack Obama and Joe Biden uh, won and they did a great job and a lot of that had to do with perception of uh, competence, perception of ability, uh, how they performed in the debates, uh, and a variety of other factors. But one of the big factors that um, made a difference was that Sarah Palin was viewed as the sort of outsider pick uh, I mean, from the state of Alaska, as sort of, it was sort of a, a kind of unusual pick for vice presidential choice. Uh, and it turned out that um, she wasn't uh, as prepared for the national stage as, uh, uh, as might have benefited McCain uh, with his wealth of experience uh, in politics. So yeah, picking a vice presidential candidate is a big deal. It can make a big difference. And so uh, I think it is always important to weigh the, sh the, the strengths and the weaknesses of uh, various candidates. And then, uh, you know, obviously a presidential election, a general presidential election in the United States is a, a very unique kind of election. It's uh, a lot of states, uh, 
a lot of money is invested. They're huge operations, you know, hundreds of millions of people potentially, uh, not hundreds of, I mean, over a hundred million people potentially could vote, uh, if not more than, uh, that, uh, probably, yeah, 120, 100 to 250 million people, uh, will probably turn out maybe a little less. But the point I'm making is that uh, who is chosen as a vice presidential uh, candidate is a big deal. And so uh, I'll start with Newt Gingrich. I think Newt Gingrich uh, has a lot of strengths. He has experience uh, that he can draw on from his time in Congress. Uh, at one point, he was the third most powerful um, uh, individual in government in the sense that he controlled... He was the gatekeeper for the entire House of Representatives, which is a big deal. Uh, and so as Speaker of the House, he, ha he wielded a lot of power. Uh, it was very apparent. And uh, I think that um, since his time in office, he's been very politically connected, very active, very visible. And uh, that's a big, uh, those are a lot of strengths that he's got all these political connections that he can draw from. And he's demonstrated a, a proven ability to fundraise, which I think would be a tremendous asset for the Trump campaign. Uh, his weakness is that he's old. Uh, he's older than Trump. Uh, he would be one of the oldest vice presidential candidates ever picked for the office, uh, for the, to be the nominee for vice president. Uh, and, you know, he resigned from being Speaker of the House. Uh, and there was a reason for it because at the time of his resignation, uh, it wasn't a great year for Republicans, uh, in the midterms then. And so the question would have to be raised that if Newt Gingrich were the vice presidential candidate, he brings a lot of baggage to the table and, um, Trump is already a very controversial candidate. He's already... Uh, controversial in the language that he uses and how he's perceived. And Gingrich, I don't see as bringing much to the table in terms of um, bringing a more measured tone to the, the campaign, uh, especially in regards to bridging um, some of the gaps that Trump has with support in the African-American community, the Hispanic vote. Uh, there's various groups that I, I just don't see it where Gingrich would be um, a boon, a benefit, uh, as a former Speaker of the House who resigned uh, and who has a lot of baggage. So in that respect, uh, I don't think that Newt Gingrich will be the uh, pick of Donald Trump to be the vice presidential candidate on the ticket. So that leaves uh, the two other main contenders that I think are uh, definitely contenders that I think Trump is, uh, uh, my prediction is that Trump is definitely thinking about as um, being the VP pick. And uh, of those two, uh, Chris Christie is not that popular of a governor in New Jersey. Uh, he's got his own political history and... Uh, uh, baggage in terms of uh, what's been going on in New Jersey and uh, yeah uh, Chris Christie I uh, I think you know proved in the campaign that uh, he is a very very strong uh, debater in the sense in terms of cross-examining uh, other people on the debate stage or in terms of presenting a very well-spoken, well-structured argument. And there's a good argument to be made that one of the strengths of Chris Christie, uh, should Trump choose him as the VP pick, is that Chris Christie could dominate in any debate he's in. For and he's, He would be in a debate uh, in... Uh, if, if Trump decides to participate in the debates um, against Hillary Clinton, who I expect is going to be the uh, Democratic nominee, Chris Christie, one could make a very solid argument, uh, was a big reason for why Marco Rubio did not succeed in the, the primaries uh, because of that rather uh, incredible moment where Chris Christie was just called out Marco Rubio on the debate stage and 
Marco Rubio kept repeating himself. That was a big, big thing in terms of perception. And so Chris Christie, while he's not a very popular governor uh, at this point uh, in New Jersey, uh, which is a weakness, you know, you don't want a, an unpopular uh, politician to be on your ticket because they're unpopular, right? So that they're unpopular for a reason. It, it, there's no uh, clear indication that his lack of popularity now in New Jersey would scale to the national stage and become popularity by being on the uh, on the presidential ticket, uh, being the VP pick um, for the Trump ticket. <clears throat> But the strengths uh, would almost definitely have to stand uh, in the debate space and uh, on the stump in terms of, and by when I say on the stump, I mean in terms of uh, campaign stops and, and rallies and talking to people. Chris Christie is very strong at that. He's a very good communicator. Uh, you know, he was elected governor. And that's uh, pretty tough. And he was elected governor in a state like New Jersey, which has a lot of democratic it, it, it's a very uh bipartisan state in some respects it's got a lot of democratic politicians in the state of new jersey and he's the republican governor of the state of new jersey which means that in terms of the general election he could bring a lot to the table by maybe not winning new jersey for donald trump but definitely uh presenting a good argument to the people of new jersey who elected him as governor uh so yeah I think that Chris Christie uh, is definitely one of the contenders. But I don't think Chris Christie uh, is going to be Trump's VP pick. No, my uh, prediction is that Mike Pence, the governor of Indiana, is going to be Donald Trump's vice presidential pick. And the reason I say that is that Mike Pence is a very uh, accomplished politician and he doesn't have the same amount of, uh, uh, what's the word, liabilities or bag political liabilities or baggage that Chris Christie and Newt Gingrich bring to the table. Uh, Mike Pence is, uh, was the chair of the House Republican Conference. Uh, he's got a clear demonstrated experience, uh, this century especially, uh, in... Congress and on Capitol Hill. Uh, he knows the people who are serving in Congress. He uh, has a lot of experience dealing with uh, people in D.C. And uh, he's also, you know, he was elected a, a governor of a state in his own right, which is a big deal. And he's not an unpopular governor to the extent that Christie is. Uh, this is important. Uh, so... Ultimately, I think that uh, if I were Trump, if I were make, looking at, all, at the, the main contenders for the VP pick and I was looking at the, the various options within the Republican uh, Party of people who, you know, have said they might want to do the job or w would do the job, uh, I think that Mike Pence is going to be Trump's VP pick. That's my prediction because he's got, he checks off a bunch of, uh, I don't see any like obvious weaknesses or liabilities he brings to the table, but he also checks off a lot of, uh, of the check boxes for what you'd want in a vice presidential, uh, pick. Uh, especially if you're someone like Donald Trump, who isn't experienced with, uh, DC politics or <clears throat> Capitol Hill. Uh, you'd want someone like Mike Pence, who was the chair of the House Republican Conference uh, and was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, to be able to um, to help you navigate the waters, if you will, in D.C. Uh, because uh, Donald Trump is clearly not, you know, politically experienced to the extent that he's he hasn't held uh, public office. Certainly hasn't held public office to the, to the level of president and, and the amount of governance that's involved. And so assuming that the Republicans maintain a majority in both the House and the Senate, it's super important to have uh, a vice presidential pick that uh, can navigate um, the bicameral institutions, uh, 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 the House and the Senate, and 
uh, help the president accomplish uh, a legislative agenda. Uh, in some respects, Joe Biden, uh, with his vast amount of experience in the Senate, uh, really has helped Obama uh, in his two terms to accomplish a whole lot of legislative stuff. Uh, I think Joe Biden was an excellent pick for vice presidential um, uh, candidate and, and now vice president because he, he had a demonstrated amount of experience dealing with Congress and, and uh, communicating with Congress in such a way as to sort of get the wheels turning, get things done. And so I think Mike Pence, with his experience both <clears throat> as at the state level as a governor, but also in Congress, brings a whole lot to the table, right? Because as the, the governor of a state, he's experienced with understanding uh, what role the federal government can have uh, in interacting with the states and helping states out and dealing with some of the, the national concerns or domestic concerns that also apply at the state level. He's the governor of a state. Those are issues that... Uh, uh, he deals with in governing a state. But because of his experience with the House of Representatives as well, he also brings that, that other really important asset, which is that he's able to interact with Congress in a way that can help you know, move things along, find uh, common ground, find consensus, uh, grease, those, uh, grease the wheels of change, uh, and, uh, and get change done. And... and uh, it would allow for Trump, should he become elected president, to become an effect, a more effective president. Um, and so that's, those are all the reasons why I think that uh, of the three main contenders that I perceive to be big contenders for the VP choice between Newt Gingrich, Mike Pence, and Chris Christie, my guess, and this is a guess, and, you know, there's no real uh, science behind this into the mind of Donald Trump. So it, it is a guess, uh, but it's fun to talk about. My prediction is that the VP pick for Donald Trump's uh, will be Mike Pence, the sitting governor of Indiana. Um, I've, uh, I hope I've laid out some reasonable, uh, a reasonable argument for why, and uh, it'll be curious to see what happens. Uh, the Republican National Co Convention is, uh, <clears throat> is happening later this month, and I will be watching. I, I want. I'm curious to see what. Uh, what happens? I like politics. Uh, I've got a degree in political science, and this is uh, what I like to watch and learn about and study and uh, think about. So, yeah, that's my prediction. Thanks for watching.